Hello, this is my video with some tips on how to manage fatigue. I have a neurological condition called Charcot Marie Tooth 1A that I was diagnosed with last year and I got COVID-19 in March and have been suffering with the long COVID symptoms for about eight months. I do feel like I've turned a corner with those um, now, just in case anybody with long COVID watches this video to give you a bit of hope. Um, I have been managing chronic fatigue and it's really hard. <laughs> Lots of people are suffering at the moment and it's really hard to get information and to get appointments. The NHS is completely overstretched. So I just thought that I'd make a short video with some tips that I've learned in case they're helpful for other people. Huge disclaimer, I'm not a medic. So the information I'm gonna share with you in this video is information that I've received in appointments and also tips that I have found helpful myself in my experience. What is fatigue? Now I'm gonna read this because Braver! Fatigue is a subjective lack of physical and or mental energy that is perceived by the individual or caregiver to interfere with usual or desired activities. And when my neurologist said to me, it's not okay that these symptoms are affecting your life, your lifestyle, your personal life, your work, um, and we have people that can help you, that was such a huge relief to have somebody say that to me. So there are things that can help and there are people that can help. Hooray, I'm not going mad. Fatigue is incredibly overwhelming and it can make you feel a number of things. It can make you feel like you've lost your identity. It can make you feel guilty for not being able to do things or feel productive. It can be incredibly scary when you feel like you can't move and you can't do anything. That's really, really, really scary. And it can also make you feel boring, which is something that I really struggle with. <laughs> I don't want to be boring. <laughs> it can really make you feel like you have an old life and a new life and that's quite hard. It can also make you feel really anxious about the future and feel like a real loss of hope for the future because you become so overwhelmed and you can't imagine feeling better. It's different for everybody and it varies day to day. So one day you can be feeling good again um, and then the next day you can have a dip and then you can feel like you've gone back to the beginning and that's really difficult. It's really, really hard to communicate to people and explain it because you can't really understand it yourself and you're also because you're so overwhelmed and you get this crazy brain fog. It's really hard to articulate and from an outsider, sometimes you can look fine and other times you're not. So that for me is a really hard thing is actually trying to communicate what it feels like to other people. Okay, so onto the tips. Number one, keep a diary. So that means that you can really see what triggers or if there's any patterns to your fatigue. You can include what you've eaten, your sleep, any activities that you've been able to do. And that also really helps you communicate to your doctor as well. I use an app called Bearable. It's got a really cute little bear on it. Number two, diet. Food is so important to me. If I get hungry, I crash and it is not good. My poor boyfriend, I basically turn into that really cute but terrifying dinosaur from Jurassic Park. The um, Actually, my six-year-old niece told me what that dinosaur's name is and I can't remember. Brain fog! My boyfriend always has a pack of mini cheddars to hand for that time when I'm on the turn. Make sure that, and this is where your diary helps as well, that you can track when are the best times for you to eat. They say to eat little and often. It's definitely a work in progress for me. I'm experimenting to see what helps and what triggers things. Um, I find that alcohol isn't good, sugar isn't good, caffeine isn't good, all the fun things. And also what was really helpful for me, which was in um, the CMT booklet, fatigue booklet that I had, is that carbs are really important. And it's something that I sort of knew that my body liked, but I always felt guilty about eating them or if I was trying to be healthy, that would be the first thing I would cut out and I need carbs, so I need potatoes, I need bread and I always feel so much better if I eat carbs. My go-to breakfast, which once I started eating this, I felt a lot better. Um, I have porridge with oat milk and banana and fruit on the top and that really sets me up for the day. If you can stock up and have food in your house, that will make a big difference. So when you do crash and you panic and you're like, oh, and you just need to grab some food, you have some. Because also when you crash and you just need to eat something, usually you might tend to get to something easy and probably not healthy. But if you have some healthy options in the house as well that you can grab, that'll make you feel loads better. Other things I have found helpful are vitamin C's, multivitamins, and I have a vitamin D spray. Shake me and I rattle, I've got so many supplements in me. Number three, boom and bust. Boom is the time when you feel like you have some energy and it's like the most amazing feeling and then you are like, I need to do this, this and this. I've got so many things that I wanna do. Or you just kind of walk around your house, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm able to clean. Who knew that I could do that? But then if you do too much, you then bust and 
crash and it takes you a long, long time to recover. In my occupational therapy appointment, they said what they recommend is instead of you waiting till you crash to have that rest, if you have four rests programmed into your day when you're feeling good, and a rest qualifies as going into a room that is dark for 10 to 30 minutes to have a rest and have no distractions, you will then retain your energy and not have those crashes so often. When you have the crashes and they are really horrible and really scary and really demoralizing, you feel like you've gone back to the beginning when this happens. It's really hard mentally, but all you can do is reassure yourself you need to rest, you need to eat something. If you have something to hand that you can just grab, you will feel a little bit better, I'm certain of that. And try to remind yourself of some recent happy times that you've been able to do things that you didn't think you might have been able to do and you won't feel like that forever, I promise. I'm still working on this. I still, you know, I'm giving this advice, but it's still, that's one of the main things I really struggle with is when you crash and not feeling completely overwhelmed. For counselling, really really important and I know it's really really hard to get access to counselling waiting lists are really long on the NHS I'm on a waiting list at the moment through my CMT appointments but I was very lucky to be able to go to see a private counsellor last year and he helped me so much and the main thing he helped me with was able to communicate how I was feeling to other people he's given me techniques for when I'm feeling overwhelmed how I can deal with that and how I can cope please push your doctor to get you seen by a counsellor so helpful I can't I can't recommend it anymore. Number five, planning activities. So an activity are any tasks that require energy for you to do them. Now I had a bit of a light bulb moment when I got this information through. I was like, oh my god, this makes so much sense why I feel certain ways about certain things. There's different components to activities. So the first component is physical. What will you have to do to get there? Are you going to be using energy when you're there? The environment, loud sounds, multiple conversations. It can be really overwhelming and triggering and draining cognitive so any decisions you need to make during the activity um, anything you need to remember anything you need to concentrate on um, that will really zap your energy so it's something to consider social so the people that you're going to see are they new people that you're meeting because that requires a different sort of energy to older friends that you know very well and who you'll feel comfortable around and maybe you can go for a rest or you know you can be very honest about your, how you're feeling emotional and that's not just whether you're anxious or you're sad but it's also if you're happy it can take a lot of energy out of you but it's also something that's really important is to do to make sure that every day you have an activity that hopefully brings you some sort of joy exercise and this is a struggle when you feel like you can't do anything with long covid i was bed bound for a long time um and couldn't even do my stretches, which was a worry with my CMT condition. You feel a little bit better if you can get out for a walk, um, even if you feel like you just cannot drag yourself off the sofa. I've been there so many times, but then if I've managed to just get outside and just walk for a little bit, I've always felt a little bit better. Don't push yourself too much, even if you're frustrated, especially if if you've been a very active person before getting fatigue because it'll just make you crash. I can now do Pilates and I can do swimming. It's been really, really positive for me to be able to do those things. I hate yoga. It makes me feel terrible. (laughs) It always has and I've really pushed myself to do it. It's not for me but it is for so many people it makes them feel brilliant. So it's just finding the exercise that makes you feel good. Six, sleep. So important to get a good night's sleep, um, even though you feel like you're probably sleeping all the time. I do find that if I am struggling with sleep, if I do a meditation as I'm trying to fall asleep, that really helps me. Um, And also having like a, a wind down bedtime routine where you can have a bath, you can read a book, you can keep calm, put some nice lavender scents around the room and they also recommend to keep to a routine so if you go to bed at the same time every night and look to get up at the same time every morning that will just help you kind of get into a pattern seven now this one's really hard because we're just going back into another lockdown but change of scenery so this would be something to plan for beyond this time I know that really depends on your circumstance um, and if you're able to do it um, I haven't got children I think anybody that's navigating fatigue with children are absolute superheroes like incredible human beings <laughs> even if you have a day where you're out in nature and you're not at home it can make such a huge difference I mean we've been in our houses for a long time now and I found any time where I've been able to get a change of scenery it's really boosted me and if you have a date where you're going to do something and that would be something to look forward to you can also feel very anxious if you have something in the diary and you're feeling I, 
I'm not sure I can do that, but you can always cancel that last minute. Um, also, there's been times where I felt like I can't do something, but then I've done it, and actually I felt really good afterwards. Um, so again, that's kind of the mental wrestle of like not pushing yourself, but also pushing yourself a little bit. Number eight, the four Ds, do, delay, delegate or ditch. This is for all the lists of things that will be building up in your mind and you're feeling so guilty about that you're not able to do. Prioritize them, which again is really hard when you have brain fog. If you write them down or make a list on your phone, things that you need to do, things that you can delay. So it doesn't matter if you delay them a week, you know, just put them on the back burner. Things that you can delegate. So ask people for help. It's really hard to do that, but it makes such a difference when you do. People want to help, but they also, they aren't mind readers. So if you say to somebody, could you get my shopping or could you do this for me? Could you carry this bag for me? It makes a big difference. And then the things that you can ditch that ugh, like babes, they're just not gonna happen. The most important thing is that you get better and you rest. You can do all of those things when you feel better. Number nine, occupational therapists. People that I know that have chronic fatigue that have seen an occupational therapist versus the people that haven't, um, it's been such a huge support for people that have. So please, please push your doctor to see an occupational therapist because they can be so helpful with all of the things that I'm saying, help you navigate work, help you navigate your home life. And also they, they will make you feel like you're not going insane. And that is, really great to know that you're not going insane. Number 10, time not task. So when you plan to do something, instead of being like, I need to finish this, um, just spend time on it. So it'd be like, I'm gonna do 10 minutes of cleaning instead of I'm gonna clean the whole kitchen. Then you can feel like you are being productive and you, and also if you wanna, if you can then finish the whole kitchen, you're like winner, winner. But it also means that you feel like you've achieved something and that you've been also productive, that you've been able to do something that day. I will say on this point that when you're not feeling good, it can take forever <laughs> to do things and actually pushing yourself at a time when you're feeling like that is just not productive. And because the next day or that afternoon, if you've had a rest, you can do something quite really quickly. <laughs> I hope these tips have been helpful. As I said, it's something that I still struggle with, um, but I have been feeling, you know, that I'm making some progress, um, which has been a real relief. I'm taking it day by day, but I am starting to feel like I can do things. I did a gig on Saturday that I never thought I would have been able to do, and I did it. Feeling very tired this week, but it's been super positive. You will have flashes of you feeling like your old self or your normal self. and hopefully those will become more frequent and that will help you feel more positive. I really hope that you can feel better soon and these tips can help manage your fatigue.